Any good cook knows that you're only as good as your tools, so using the right kitchen knife for the job is essential. From chef's knives and cleavers to boning knives, filleting knives, and paring knives, a serious cook buys only quality cutting utensils and stores them in a block to keep their blades sharp. Today's blades are truly a cut above the stone tools that cavemen used. Knife making is now a science, producing tools that really give you that edge in the kitchen. First, they roll out steel by the sheet from a big coil. Then, this machine called a press cuts out the blades with a punch. And it really does pack a punch. It brings 110 tons of pressure to bear in order to make these steel cutouts. Next, things get really hot. They roll baskets full of the blade cutouts into a high-temperature furnace. The blades bake at 843 degrees Celsius for two hours. This hardens the steel. Out of the fire and into the freezer. The blades chill out at sub-zero temperatures, minus 49 degrees Celsius, for two hours. This freezer is cooled by liquid nitrogen. Now we have what they call cold hard steel. Next, they douse each blade with water while a belt grinder smooths the back of the blade and sparks fly. Continuous water keeps the steel cool and hard while a sander smooths the back of the blade. Now a robot moves in. This robotic arm has vacuum grippers like an octopus. It picks up a blade by suctioning. Then it transports it to a grinding machine. The machine grinds the blade to give it that cutting edge Water flows continuously through the grinder, again to keep the steel cool. The robot keeps everything moving, putting a paring blade through the grinder every 12 seconds. The automated process for this bigger blade is a bit different. This robotic arm holds the blade in a grip rather than through fast-acting suctioning. That's because it takes more time to grind this big blade called a cook's knife. So this arm holds onto this blade a few seconds longer. But if this makes you nervous, relax. The robot doesn't have a habit of dropping them. Some blades require a personal touch, like this Chinese chef's knife used for chopping veggies. The worker runs the blade over the grinding stone very carefully. This gives it a very thin edge. Then a laser burns the brand name onto the side of the blade. Next, a piece of wood goes into a clamp and a router shaves it into the shape of a handle. The end of the blade now fits neatly into the handle. A worker clamps the knife onto a riveting machine. Those things that look like bullets on an ammunition belt are actually the rivets. The machine forces the rivets into the handle from both sides. The rivets lock together inside the handle so they can never be taken apart. Rivets are forever. Now they grind down any protruding steel from the handle. This makes the wood flush with the steel from the blade. The piece of metal that extends into the handle is called the tang. It gives the knife weight and balance. Finally, they home the knife between two stone grinding wheels. With this kind of an edge, these knives will slice paper. But these knives will do their best work on the cutting board, where they'll make the cook's life easier and meals tastier, no matter how you slice it.